Hello everyone, Ruby Retrograde Tarlante here and what I'll be serving you guys up is uh, an unboxing slash side to side comparison again. <laughs> well, maybe not again. It's It's been a while since I did a side by side, but um, it is from a Kickstarter, as you can see by the title of this video, uh, that I was uh, rather excited to get. Um, but, uh, uh, I was kind of joking that the creator, uh, did it on purpose because of one particular deck that I especially wanted. I had to back another deck to get it. Anyways, long story. I will not be talking much farther, uh, further. I am mixing my words. I am sorry, but I have to drag this box because it's a pretty big box. I caved and cracked and added some other things to um my pledge uh and what i'm talking about is this big box here it is from studio artemy and if anyone else is a fan of studio artemy then they'll know exactly uh what i'm talking about uh that is the hold on i need to remember what's the name of the campaign exactly because i tend to call it by the actual deck um, so yes, the um, campaign was the Arcanum Vitae deck, the secret, the secret of life. So on that campaign, which started in May, if I'm not mistaken, it was a month long campaign. You see, this is the size. Of, like I don't know if you can, if you'll be able to appreciate the side of the box, but when I got it, it was ripped and I had to tape it. I got it at work. Um, and then I had to tape it so just to be sure that nothing would fall out while I got back home. But nothing was harmed, nothing was damaged when I looked at it. So beyond all of these, this paper to wrap, and you can kind of see a little bit of it, is the Arcana video. Like I said, it was back in May, I want to say, that the camping started, ended in June. And I'll make another video where I will unbox Arcanum v Vitae. One of the stretch goals, was it a stretch goal? Yes, one of the stretch goals to that deck, uh, to that, uh, pu that, you know, depending on the funding that we could reach, was a different version of one of her popular deck, which is the Fortuna Tarot deck. So here, if I'm just looking quickly in the box that I got, so... In the Arcanum Vitae, I got a little sheet of stickers. I did uh, end up buying um, some of the add-ons. For example, there is this table spread that is looks very pretty and very you know cozy and comfortable to the touch. I'll talk about it more in the video in a separate video, like I mentioned. I also purchased this. Uh, let me see. If you can see it, this this was one of the uh, stretch goals slash add-ons, if I'm not mistaken, as well, uh, that you could get this. Um, I, I think it's uh, Black Obsidian, I think was the name of it. Anyways, it's the colors of the new version of the deck that she created, the Black Obsidian. It is a beautiful purpley pink color uh, grimoire. Uh, also had, of course, a little thank you cards. And then finally, at the bottom of the uh, the box, after going through all the goodies, we have right here, here I'll go like this. We have Arcanum and right next to it, uh, Black Obsidian or, yeah, I think it's called Black Obsidian. So like I said, Arcanum Vitae will be in a separate video. The object of this video is this one here. So let me just put everything back over here so I have some space. There we go. This deck. Now, I I think before the campaign, there were some pictures of this deck or something or another. Because I knew of this deck a little bit before the campaign. And I was all excited because I'm like, oh, I'm just going to back this deck and I'll be fine. And then come to find out when the campaign for Arcanum Vitae happened, this was a um, a stretch goal. And I was like, oh, she got me, girl. <laughs> because I was like, 
like, I just want to have the deck. And basically, you kind of had to back it to then be able to um, to get the deck. Uh, so I was like, ah. It's not that I didn't want to have our condom kind of today, but in my head, I was like, dang it. Like, it's really... Y'all, I see what you're playing at, but it's okay. I'll, I'll survive. Um... So there you go. Uh, I did forget. I, I, I'm talking about Arcanum Vitae and Fortuna Tarot deck. Not even mentioning uh, that it's created by Maria Prena or full name Maria J. Fa Fayardo Prena from Studio Art uh, Studio Academy. This is the Obsidian Occult. There you go. I, I call it Black Obsidian, but it's actually Obsidian Occult. As you can see by the theme and color, it is a black and... Let's call it magenta pink kind of hollow deck, which looks beautiful. I it it was a um it was a I don't know love struck love at first sight type of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing that I did back when I uh, got the Fortuna um, Opal Omen where I did a side to side. So this time, instead of just having two decks, I will have the uh, Obsidian Occult, uh, Opal Omen, and uh, Amethyst Aura. I do not have the Emerald uh, version, which is green. And I'm almost surprised that I have three colors. Usually, I'm especially if it's a deck that is, for the most part, unchanged in terms of the art and illustration. Usually, I just pick, go with my favorite color and kind of leave it at that. This is not what kind of happened with this here. So, I don't know. Maybe we'll have, we need to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Am I actually going to part with one of them? Chances are slim. Right now, I'm going to say no and chances are slim. But you know what? I can't, I can't say never because you never know what can happen. So here you go. Uh, let's just go and open this, these up. And maybe it will help you um, not find yourself in a situation like me who has uh, multiple colors of the same deck and you're kind of thinking well maybe it's a bit excessive maybe i should pare it down and then you're thinking oh no i cannot no 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 i cannot <laughs> or something like that so let me put the three of them together and we'll see the difference uh i don't believe there should be much of a difference between uh, all three editions um in terms of cardstock or um Really, the difference will be in the colors, the aesthetic looks. Oh, this is hard. So here again, two-piece box with a uh, thumb opening. Let me see here. Uh, and again, I believe this would be the same uh, description you have at the back, which is the Fortuna Tarot is a 79-card deck designed to help you unlock your potential and turn your purples into gold. Uh, combining ancient alchemical principles, tarot, numerology, and astrology, you will embark on a new journey within. With it, oh, you will embark on a new journey within toward clarity and an and enlightenment, opening the gates of the occult and spir spirituality. There you go. So we open it. Ah, uh, let's see if I can. Oh, there we go. All right. So here we have the box. There, I should probably do. Should have. Probably done that before em emptying the boxes. Oh, that is the bottom of the box, not the top of it. Let me grab the top. Where is the top of that box? So we can see that it is the same everywhere. Just different colors and different finishes. Here is what the emerald looks like. It came with... Uh, it came with the, the the Opal Omen. The guidebook, again. The same here. Same size. Let me grab the Obsidian Occult here. Again, the same 
same feel and look and it probably will have the same information inside uh in same style well let me just let's see high priest this is the same quote oh yeah same quote so again we're not missing anything between the color and additions so let me put these aside oh and i dropped the card there we go and then if we just um, take out the cards out of the box again it should be the same in all three boxes so again the keys and the little thing at the bottom open the gates of occult knowledge sorry i don't wanna there you go just in different colors okay so there we go let's put these aside at the boxes and we will take a look at the guidebook but then again because it's the same we're not gonna it's it's not gonna be necessarily uh, anything new in it so because it was a kickstarter we have a little extra card here's the back of the cards with a little from my heart to yours um and a little thank you with uh some person uh discount off the back of the cards exactly the same design but here you can see where it's more of a plain back maybe with a little bit of a wispy smoke in the background here it's almost like a tie-dye um, setting sun type of color especially with the pinks here and then here with the obsidian it has specks of white And then the foil is more in the pink and purpley. The cardstock is, again, exactly the same. No difference at all. It's, uh, uh, there, there's, there's no changes in this, in the cardstock. The card edges here for the amethyst, it is purple. The opal, it has a nice, lovely, old book red that reminds me of old books i used to read when i was a kid and for obsidian if i can pick up the cards oh, a little bit dusty but it is here when i'm not looking through the camera it's a darker purple but in the camera it looks almost light pink so I guess depending if you hold it in your hand, you might find the, you might agree with me that it's a darker purple. I don't know, would I call it fuchsia? But in the camera, it looks really bright compared to what I'm seeing when I don't look at the camera. Okay. So let's put that away. And let's put these a side like this and you can see or should I put the obsidian in the middle seeing as the one the object of our flip through here you go let's put it in the middle maybe it makes more sense like this okay so what I'll do is I'll just uh, flip through each card and then you can see uh, um, just how they look like with different colors, different hues. Uh, right away, what I can tell, just looking at the three cards, if you're someone who maybe worries about if it's readable in most light conditions, I would probably say one of the darker colors might be better for you. Although for me, I don't have too much, too much issues reading from the opal. Uh, maybe when it's a little bit darker, or if I'm uh, maybe I I probably wouldn't read it necessarily by candlelight in a dark room with just candlelight or like uh, low light something like that. But daytime or you know decent lighting, it's fine. It's okay. The rest, no issues. Um, even with 
all the the hollow and the colors going on here so so i can see i could see maybe people may uh, having a little bit more of issues reading looking at the images um and the details on a lighter colored background than a darker one but oh it's so beautiful okay so let's just flip 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 and then you can see um i'll tell you right now there won't be for the most part there won't be differences in the designs um i think in the opal there are some of the cards that the art were modified a little bit i think it was this one yes that it some of the art was modified on a few cards not too many um and i don't know if those modification carried over to the um to the obsidian or if it just went back to uh what we see on the um amethyst slash um emerald so sorry i just had to move my camera a little bit so here we are with the magician it's definitely a different feel with the black and We'll call it black and pink just for the for ease of explaining but as you can see everything is the same um i i place this art on the abstract side of things because it's not when it's uh i don't know even a regular rider wade smith deck where you know there's people things place plants clouds and everything else here it's very much the topic in this case the empress and then uh some symbols so for example as we're moving to the emperor um we're having the astro astrological correspondence the card title and the representation of the emperor the uh, hierophant has been renamed the oracle lovers as you can see it's all i forgot which cards were modified i think it's maybe there's like one or two in the major arcana and then one or two in the minors this the chariot there's this and um and a few cards in the pentacle slash talisman talisman suit i see it and i think sailor moon <laughs> it just makes you think of the scepter if you know you know basically so see you can see with the opal depending where okay so now my hand is like in the zoom but see this is an example where if it's kind of covered the light is not hitting on it it might be a little bit difficult to read that it's the chariot but otherwise you know no issues and hopefully i put the the opal and amethyst deck back in order so that i don't i won't have to pull out the miners okay, and then here the wheel of fortune has been renamed fortuna I think these two on these two versions i like it i like the feel i get from it the best interesting for like i currently i'm using the opal deck 
and I'm looking at the hang one and I'm realizing I haven't pulled that card. But in other decks, I can remember that, yes, I have pulled the hangman quite a few times, but in this one, it's as if it's the very first time I'm looking at the hang at the hangman or hanged one here. I find it interesting, depending on the deck, it seems like some cards I see more often. So here is death. I almost want to say that the death card seems to be almost like a mascot of so of sorts um, for Fortuna, because I think for the Opal and maybe maybe even for the Obsidian, there were a few items that you could get that had the death card image on it. A lot of people liked the death card. Now Alchemy, this is for Temperance. Moving on to the devil. Which is the lovers with the pentacles. Ah, I said pentacles. Pentagram. Somehow it looks different. I see the tower differently than I see it on the opal. These two I kind of see it the same way, but my eyes is, is interpreting the tower a little bit differently. I, I'm not too sure how to explain it, but I don't know. My eyes is looking at it dif differently. The star. the moon another pretty card I like it especially on the opal version the sun yeah I like it on here too a lot and judgment then instead of the world we have the universe again I like it here maybe because to like I see black and purple and I'm thinking are automatically like shadowy type of stuff but eh. and then ah yes it has it there as well the magnum opus which is the extra card um, in this deck and now let's see yay I put in the right order okay so now we are the candles the ace Is finding myself fixing the cards. Four. And five. Now I know it, they're the same images, but for some reason this circle here feels a little bit seems like it's colored in a little bit different but it logically i know it's not the case it's i think my eyes just looking at it now we're going to the six of wands with a nice laurel wreath and then seven I'm wondering if I should zoom in a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. Maybe I should have tried zooming it in. 
I'm sorry, guys. I think it might be a little bit better zoomed in. Eight. And you'll notice also in the minors, uh, you'll have just the number um, and then the illustration of the suit, but you'll also have what it's associated with. So in this example for the nine of wands, it'll be a moon in Sagittarius. And I said wands, it's actually candles. Oh good, I put the court, the court cards in proper order. So princess uh, will be the um, page. Ooh, I forgot the word for a second. So princess of candles or page of wands. And here, instead of having um, astrological signs, we'll have the elements. So here it'll be fire. So princess is water of fire. Oh, I'm I, I get those mixed up so often. Yes, because the prince is fire of fire. And then the queen is water of fire. What did I say? And then the king is Earth or air? I, it's earth and air. I always get mixed up. So before I embarrass myself further, I'll just stop talking now. All right? Let's just pretend I said nothing. <laughs> I'll, if, if I remember, I'll put the correction somewhere down there below. If not, I'll put it maybe in the comments. And now we are going into the elixirs, which are the cups. Which is water. Yes, there's the two of cups. Oop. Let's skip two. There we go. Managing three cards at uh, three decks at, at one is a little bit of a journey and adventure. As you can see, up to now, I even forgot what were the, the little details that were uh, edited. So I'm sorry for not pointing them out. If you see them, feel free to point them out in the comment section. But you can see otherwise, for the most part, it's all the same. Uh, it's just different. Um, different uh, colors and color pairings and it's a question of what interests you the most or which color attracts your eye the most or which one you vibe the most with And it is, as you can see with the miners, uh, Pip slash Marseille-ish, if you want to call it that way. So it's not a scene depicted, but rather just the number um, of icons representing the suit. So 
So for those that prefer something uh, more illustrated, that probably won't be their cup of tea. But that's okay. We are at 10. Now the princess. I know it's supposed to be like a vial with like little wings, but when I look at it, every time I'm thinking of like a a Valkyrie or like some sort of like warrior when I when I see this. But I know it's like a vial. Or a bottle, like maybe like a fancy bottle of perfume. Prince. And a queen. Then king. Moving on to the keys. The keys are the swords. Not air. I will have. I have to remember. Air is pointing up with the with the line through it. And I believe that key is also the what we see at the back of the box. Yeah, it's the same key. Minus the little ornaments. We have two. at these keys and sometimes I think of um, Kingdom Hearts the video game mind you I haven't played Kingdom Hearts in years and years and I even think the last one I, I played I didn't even finish but still makes me think of it now we're at five of keys Like, even though it's just uh, pips, it's still nicely arranged on the card. And here we go at 10. Oh, just a little bit of fluff on the cards. I will say... Oh, and I'm noticing also on this card, there seems to be a little bit of a, oh, it was an extra piece of foil on the card. At least I can kind of rub it off. Okay, all good. But it is a little bit dusty. All right. Now we may as well flip it to the princess. something because I always forget about the element. Okay, 
you. So that's water of air. And then air of air then. Okay, so that means the princess of page is earth. Here's the king. With a much more ornate gate than the queen. Any case, here we are now at the talismans. Then the two. I'm quite fond of that middle um, ornament that kind of it, it, it's like a barrier but um, well it six of pentacles is not so much of a barrier because you're sharing stuff but I don't know it's like a little well, it could be like from a top-down gate with like the doors here in the middle. But anyways, just the ornament with the little crescent moon here. Something about it. I, I really like the design of this. Now we have seven. And then eight. get to nine and then ten and one last time the princess or page It looks like a really fancy ring every time I look at it I think like fancy ring the prince which again reminds me of the moon scepter Side by side by side. So I'll put away the um, other two, the other two decks because I um, I'll just shuffle the uh, obsidian instead of shuffling the other two. There's no there's no point in me shuffling the other two really. And hopefully uh, this helps you figure out a little bit more which color uh, you might prefer among the uh, three so far. Uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of a miracle. I managed to not get the emerald one. I don't even know how that happened. 
since it seemed that I've been accumu accumulating the other colors just like that, it's like they're appearing like mushrooms in my place. So here we are. And I have nothing to say. The quality, it's the same throughout the decks. There is no difference. Um, the finish is just beautiful. Shuffling. The same feel as the other deck. It's sure that maybe it's a little bit... Um, harder because the cards are rather still crisp it doesn't smell terrible i just had to smell it i was curious <laughs> yeah it's not bad yeah. yeah 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 not bad let's try overhand Overhand is good. No issues there. So just for the exercise of the, the yeah the exercise of doing it, I'll pull. Let's have one major card and one minor card, and we'll take a look at the guidebook, which. As far as I as my memory goes, it is the same throughout all the edition the editions. No, that is a minor. I am looking for a major. Please, major arc. Yeah. You stuck on my finger. No. Nope. But shuffling, it's a nice experience. It doesn't clump a lot, just me shuffling like that. I'm not having much of an issue. Maybe it doesn't slide together, like, you know, when you need to tap it together, it doesn't slide together as quickly as with the other ones, but that might just be. Okay, what are you? No. I just want one major. One major. Which you are not. Which you are not. Which you are. Ah, there you go. See? You remember what I said about how I say I don't I don't have that card? It's like I'm seeing this card for the first time and it comes up. All right, got it. Now let us pull out the guidebook. So here it is, soft cover, quite filled with inf it's and as with the other uh, guidebook books you'll find in the other um, colors it is full of information very well written in that aspect um, for someone who wants to maybe take a crack at pip um, pip style deck or even even a beginner who is more attracted to something more abstract than fully illustrated um, tarot decks it's definitely full of information for you there so let's start with the um five of keys yes five of keys what uh you'll see is that for the miners you'll have here because i'm so close to it you will have the uh name of the card some keywords the elements the uh, astrological influence uh a description and like you know where it, it could be then um how it relates in an astrology astrological sense and then reversed a little paragraph about it in the in the majors what you'll have is a quote that relates to the card and then after that it's the same thing but it all holds into one page so we'll start with the five of keys here uh, okay can i hold it there we go so i don't have to go back so here is the five of keys and here it's uh here it is listed as competition hollowing betrayal and reconciliation element air lord of defeat astrological influence uh, venus in aquarius the five of keys swords is traditionally depicted as a man holding three swords and glancing over his shoulder at two swords on the floor and two men who are walking away with slouched shoulders the five of keys or swords 
symbolizes the inner conflict we sometimes experience even after coming away from a challenging situation victorious. The card is ruled by the first deacon of Aquarius, which is related to Venus in Aquarius. The planet of beauty, love, and pleasure feels a bit conflicted working with the sign of the water bearer Aquarius. The five of keys, okay, I'll, I won't say the sword again, appears as a sign that sometimes do uh, wait, appears as a sign that sometimes doing what feels right to us may create some conflicts and disappointments to others. In numerology, the number five is seen as four plus one, meaning that in order to preserve our stability and comfort, sometimes we have to make difficult decisions that might not be beneficial for others, but for ourselves. The planet Venus in Aquarius is idealistic and humanitarian, humanitarian. Though that clashes with the energy of Venus, which is self-oriented Venus. Oh, which is self-oriented. Venus thrives in comfort, stability, and pleasure, though doing the right thing may cause us some type of loss. Therefore, Venus in Aquarius is more intellectual and also more emotionally detached. The Five of Keys is a reminder to think about our priorities and fight for our needs. While empathy is an essential part of our psychological development, so is establishing clear boundaries and protecting our integrity. And in reverse, uh, when the Five of Keys appears reversed, it is a sign we have been neglecting ourselves for a while, falling into a people-pleasing mentality. This card reverse can also indicate we are refusing to give up on an internal battle or challenge with someone trying to fight for it, even when it seems to be over. So as you can see, very informative um, and it, 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 touches, it touches on like everything. Now the next one is the hanged one, as you can see. Here the quote says, we become blind, not because of our inability to see what is in front of us, but because we are too focused on our own perspective. So for here, uh, the hanged one is contemplation, adaptability, sacrifice, martyrdom, astrological influence, Neptune. The hanged one, traditionally known as the hangman, is often depicted as a man hanging with his legs in a T-cross-shaped position. This card symbolizes how only when we are presented with a different perspective and we are forced to wait until we adapt ourselves to what seems uncomfortable at first, are we then able to see reality for what it truly is. This card implies suffering and sometimes negatively associated with a victim mentality and martyrdom. The hanged one is connected with the planet Neptune, one of the three modern slash transpersonal planets. Ruler of the 12th house, the planet Neptune is connected with the brain's ability to tap into higher realms and, is, and it is also connected with spirituality. However, the planet Neptune can also manifest as mental fog and confusion. Reverse, we get used to our suffering so much so that our discomfort becomes a form of escapism. Open your eyes and dares to see reality for what it is. Alrighty, what do I think of this deck? I think it is just as great as the other three colors that I have. Uh, I have nothing to say about the um, cardstock or the finish. Like, it's a very, like, aesthetically, it is five stars, five out of five, ten out of ten. It is a beautiful color combination. I will say that um, the creator, Maria um, Maria Prina, seems to pride, pride herself on, on delivering quality uh, goods. And it shows. Um, I know there was also talismans that were avail um, available and things like that. I, I didn't pick to choose that. But um, in any case, just all the information in the guidebook... Um, even for me who, um, I don't ha I'm, I wouldn't call myself, um, an expert or intermediate in astrology and, you know, very, a little bit of knowledge of numerology, just the extra information that, uh, all the information that's put in the guidebook, uh, helps me understand, you know, maybe something that I forget or something that I don't get. Um, so, I mean, sometimes I, sometimes instead of just trying, uh, looking it up online or something, I kind of just go and open the, that guidebook and kind of just read, read the little, like whatever paragraph, uh, they say about, uh, numerology or even the astrological uh, correspondence. And it, it's helpful to me. 
um, it, it would be good for beginners although um if they have a reference book that that shows traditional rider Waite smith images they may it might be a little bit of a work to kind of put two and two together but you could also use the tarot's guidebook to kind of just help you out um, otherwise for those that um, are more um have more knowledge than me, let's say, in astrology or numerology, that would definitely be something um, that I could see them pick up. Of course, because it is just PIP and it's more abstract, uh, I, I know many people prefer to have details and, and fully illustrated uh, decks, and I do too. But once in a while, pulling uh, this deck and kind of just going with um, what I, well, I, it seems like I always forget my Marseille. I have to like work with Marseille and then I stop working with Marseille and then I forget everything about Marseille. <laughs> Anyways, but because the numerology is also something that is used as Marseille, it, it's kind of a refresher when I'm not using Marseille. But then that doesn't mean that I necessarily remember it. It seems like it kind of goes away after a while. I'll just have to work more with it. That's just what it means. In any case, um, like I said in my other comparison of... Um, amethyst and opal does it mean that you need those two decks and in this case those three decks between um uh, where is it now between uh, fortuna um opal and uh, fortuna amethyst to me no it doesn't mean that you necessarily need to have all three unless for you you have specific um you see using these three colors or even the fourth color if you're if you want to go for the amethyst if you have specific color uh, um topics or um practice that you want to use with each of this these deck like if you want to use this obsidian for shadow work exclusively or maybe for your own personal work and then you want to use the opal for something else and then you want to use amethyst for i don't know everyday general everybody can touch it like at the end, it's all your prefer personal preference and um, how you see yourself using it. For me, if I had just discovered... Oh, there goes a tower. I'm going to flip this card over because for at least for Fortuna, me and tower, we, we, we have some talking to do. Let me just pretend I never saw the tower card. <laughs> um, but what was I saying? For, yes, for me, if I just learned about fortuna uh the fortuna tarot and i just learned that there was you know these different colors that you could choose um between the four i'm including emerald even though i don't have it here ah that would be hard if i were to to discover this tarot deck today and uh i would and i would buy only one deck Ooh, it's difficult because between I would I would pick this one over amethyst, I think. But between this one and opal, I would also pick this one over emerald. Ah, oh, but it's hard. I, man, there are chances that I might end I I would have ended up with maybe just obsidian and then opal. But if I had to pick just, just one, oh, it's hard. It's very hard. Oh, it's very hard. It would be between, it would, it would be between the opal and the obsidian. I don't know if I would be able to pick just one. What probably would have happened is I would buy one and then sometime later I would buy the other if I still would have felt um, so inclined to, to get another color. But I think, yeah, if I if I were if I had discovered Fortuna today, this would this would end up in my collection. I don't know how fast, but it would end up in my collection. So there you have it. Fortuna, the newest uh, um color edition, if I want to call it that, by Maria Prina. Uh woo, let me flip the card like this too. Huh? Let me know what you think of this deck. Uh and I I say of this deck it's more let me know what you think of this co particular color edition at this point um 
how cool is it basically <laughs> do you like it would you add in your collection of course if like i mentioned before if you're not a fan of um pip style might not be a cup of tea or maybe if you were if you if you were open to trying um pip style deck would you try this one or would you try another one um if you have any questions or anything else let me know in the comment section down below down there doo -doo. and uh thank you so much for spending some time with me in doing a side by side comparison of fortuna uh opal amethyst and obsidian <laughs> i'm always forgetting the name um it's it's a long day but uh, yes, let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. And uh, thank you for spending this time with me and going through all three decks and um, the doing the flip throughs of all three of them. And until next time, bye guys.